Welcome everyone. I'm so glad to have Chris Pavone in this masterclass. He's going to teach you not how to find clients, but how to create coaching clients, which is the best way to, to have clients. Uh, Chris is a former uh, WWE pro wrestler, and you can just uh, type Kylan Croft on uh, YouTube. Correct. Yeah. Kalen Croft with a C. Yeah. That, that's just amazing. Like yeah. I'm so proud to show that to my people and say like, this is my coach. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. so, so welcome first, Chris, I'm really honored to have you. And if you could take a few minutes to explain how you became a professional coach from being a pro wrestler, and being an elementary school art teacher. Yeah. Well, first, I'll also like to say thank you, Lingan. I'm super excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me on. This is a lot of fun. It's uh, with our schedules to, to match up. It's, it's uh, five to five. To, it's five to six a.m. in the morning. It's five to five a.m., but I'm totally soaked and pumped to be here. So thank awesome. you. Yeah. And yeah, great question. It's something I get asked a lot. <laughs> How do you go from pro wrestler to teacher to now coach? And, you know, I think a lot of that is just following your passions and your desires and your dreams and what you want to do. The pro wrestling, ever since I was a little kid, about 10 years old, I used to watch, it used to be called WWF, World Wrestling Federation, and then they, they changed their name. So WWE, WWF, same company. So <laughs> I always wanted to be a WWF pro wrestler. And when I was in high school and everybody's talking about going to college and what are you going to do? I still wanted to be a pro wrestler. Huh. So my parents, they said, okay, if you know, if you really want to do this wrestling thing, just get your degree and we will be supportive of it. So I got my degree in art. Um, and then I just pursued wrestling and made that happen. And, After a few years, I got a contract with the WWE and ended up working for them. And after doing that for just under 10 years, um, I ended up leaving. And uh, at that time, I was 30 years old. And uh, the timing was just right. I got released from my contract. Um, nothing, you know, I left on great terms with the WWE. But I was also at peace with, with being done with pro wrestling at that time. So... Uh, that, you know, at that, I was 30 years old and I thought, you know what, well, what's next for me? I've wrestled my entire twenties. And since I had that art degree that my parents <laughs> encouraged me to get, I never thought I would use it. I was just like, sure, I'll go to school for, I'm an artist. I'll, I'll major in art. So I have my bachelor of fine arts degree. And so when I knew I was done with wrestling, I thought, well, what do I want to, what can I do next? And after some reflection and working with a personal mentor of mine and Uh, doing some journaling, I'd, I thought, well, you know, I like kids. I have this art degree. Maybe I can be an art elementary school art teacher. And um, I was totally out of field. Um, didn't know how you make that happen. Like, how do you even get into teaching? I didn't go to school for teaching. And, you know, that was a whole process in itself. Um, so I, what I did was I searched out a teacher. I said, hey, you're a teacher. How do you become a teacher in the state of Florida? here in the States. And, um, she gave me some steps to do and I ended up following her advice and one thing led to another and I took some tests and ended up getting hired. And I've been a teacher. Let's see, I'm in my ninth year of teaching. And then the coaching came about because probably about in my fifth or sixth year of teaching, maybe even before that, probably my fourth or fifth year, I started to think, okay, I let, went from wrestling to teaching and I figured I'd just stay in teaching for the next, you know, 20, 30 years or whatever. And I started to think, man, you know, um, I'm getting kind of bored with this nine to five. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I don't think I'm, I'm not really digging doing the, you know, the same thing every day and, you know, week after week, year after year. So this entrepreneurial spirit, which I didn't even know was there, started to be birthed or, or come alive, wake up inside of me. And I started to pursue 
some online courses and, and started listening to podcasts of these, you know, people, entrepreneurs and, you know, really people like yourself and what you're doing and putting out in the world. And through a series of events, I, I ended up getting into coaching and I like, like I've done with everything else in my past, I took steps and followed that and pursued that. And, um, you know, that, and that's been allowed to unfold for me. So the, there's a little more that goes into it, which we can talk yeah. about, but that's how I ended up getting in, into coaching. And now, yeah, I'm going to be probably, I'm going to be going after this school year, I'm going to be going full time into my coaching practice. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's so exciting. Um, yeah. Did have you had the imposter syndrome? Because oh. you haven't been uh, uh, trained to be a coach, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, and so when you said not being trained to be a coach, do you mean like when I first transitioned into coaching? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, in, so oh, po imposter syndrome. So I work with coaches today and that's in what any field, really. I have a client who's a photographer. He wants to build his photography business. I think everybody at some point, uh, has experiences of imposter syndrome absolutely and I, yeah i think what that what that is is when you first that dream you have or that big goal awakens inside of you and you start to take the action towards it um i think everybody at some point experiences that like who the heck am i to do this so how did you fight this yeah so so if one was to have a coach, so I needed to be coached and to learn how to coach. And so I can experience it from that end. And really, I would say Lingen, the best way to fight imposter syndrome is to just go out and do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is you want to do, whether it's photography or coaching or, you know, whatever. It's just, it's just walking through that fear of doing it. And then what are people going to think? People aren't going to think anything. They're going to be like, Oh, that's awesome. You know what? <laughs> and if yeah, yeah. Th that's one of the biggest things that's helped me overcome imposter syndrome. Yeah. The most important is the value you bring to your clients, right? That's the only, uh, uh criteria. That... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Yep. So, so I, you, I obviously get a lot of, um, benefits from uh, being coached by you and uh, today we're going to talk about like how to get those coaching clients um, yeah. maybe I can share like how I got to know you first Cliff mm -hmm. Ravenscraft um, interviewed you or talked yeah interviewed you in his podcast and then I went to Free the Dream you were really welcoming I, re I remember it And then I was like, okay, he's a coach. Uh, he seems nice and, and um, has a great car character. And he seems like very skilled. And someone he, uh, like, if someone like Cliff uh, recommends him, it's that probably he's really good. And we had a, a, a coaching experience. So that's what we're going to talk. And then you showed me the value you could bring and that's how i was convinced to work with you so uh nothing about the internet marketing thing even though there's nothing wrong about that because i do it uh so yeah i wanted to introduce this uh master class with just telling my story of how i found you so uh you're going to bring us into four steps can you just tell us what it's gonna be and then uh just deliver what you prepared for us yeah absolutely yeah so in let's see you you said it there when you said you know creating clients because that's really what it's what it's all about and you know where do you find clients and what i implement and what i've been taught and is you know from this book the prosperous coach by steve chandler and rich litvin um i think a lot of people go by this book Yeah. And I've been coached or I'm, I'm being coached by currently by people uh, in this, what I call the prosperous coach tree. Yeah. Um, 
Just a very quick note, uh, if you're French and you're listening and watching to this, uh, in French, it's called profession coach. Profession coach, you can just find it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And, and so what that book, the way I, and, and that's the cool thing about anything that we learn, like we, we take it in, and then we kind of make it, we put our own spin on it and, and, and make it our own type of thing. Um, but my basic, you know, you know uh, framework for creating clients is that what they talk about in that book, it's connect, invite, create, propose. And for coaches and, and the co like people I work with who want to be coaches, who are our coaches, that's always the, you know, the big question is how do I get clients, right? And Lee, one of the ways, the way you kind of just introduced this is, is that process. Um, for example, so you said that, well, so for one, I, I build my practice through referral and invite, basically. Um, so you heard about me through Cliff. So that's like kind of like a referral. Um, and then connecting with people, you have coaching conversations with people that's what we had. We had, we had a coaching experience. So that way, you know, you knew, okay, this is what it's like to be coached by Chris and to work with Chris. So you give people the experience and that's like the creation process. Uh, and we, we create clients that way. So, and you mentioned internet marketing, right? Internet marketing, it's fine. Um, but I found, and it's very valuable. And I'll just tell you so what I did. I, at first with coaching, I tried to do just internet marketing only to get clients. Because I, you know, I thought that's what I should be doing or that's what I should do. And when I say internet marketing to get clients, you know, that looked like I have a podcast, The Chris Pavone Show. That, was, that looked like doing a call to action at the end of every episode. That looked like doing Facebook Lives, you know, s directing people to my website. That looked like having an email list and trying to direct people to my website from there. And in all those instances, I would just direct people to my website and say, hey, go to chrispavone.com and click on the work with me tab and you can sign up to work with me. And, uh, and all those things I mentioned are great. Podcasts, Facebook lives, email. That's the only problem is it's lacking that personal connection because when I read the Prosperous Coach book, one of my biggest takeaways were it's really hard to convince people to, um, to pay you to coach them when they don't know what that's like, right? Um, so like in our example, with you and I, we had met before. And so we, there, was, there was a personal connection there. You met me, um, and, and then from there... Um, we, and, and you did sign up for my website at first, right? But yeah. there was still, yeah, there was still, uh, you know, connection there where, where we got to, you know, vibe with each other a bit. And, and um, so the, the approach I take today, which is a lot of fun, and which, is, which I love, the way I create clients is this connect, invite, create, propose. And I'll give you a quick example of what that could look like. So the connect step. And this is what I teach people that who are coaches. So the, the next step, uh, literally, it can be done anywhere and should be done anywhere. And I'm talking like if I go to the grocery store, if I'm at the gym, um, if I'm out shopping, I've created clients that way. And that is, I, ca I keep my antenna up throughout my day and just kind of listen to what people are saying. If I'm talking with somebody, kind of listen to the language they're using and just look for ways I could help. And again, that can look like many different things, but if I see where I can maybe be of help to somebody, I'll either strike up a conversation with them. Um, or I might say something like, you know what? Uh, why don't we exchange email addresses? Uh, I think uh, I have some resources that might find helpful with that, or let's exchange information. And that's, that's connecting, you know, and, and, and that, that could be uh, sending them an inspirational YouTube video, something very simple. 
some sort of audio file or an article that they'll find helpful. And that type of thing, it's that connecting. Um, and then if, 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 um, if it feels appropriate from there, you can inv you just invite them to a coaching session. And some people, would you agree with this? Like, and some people don't even know what coaching is. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, most yeah. people, I would say. <laughs> yeah. So in that event, you just use language, whatever feels appropriate. So I might say something like, you know what, you know, I hear what you're saying about this particular issue. Um, you know, why don't we set up a time and have a conversation about this? I might, I think I might be able to provide some help with this and we'll, we'll have a call and, and, and see what happens. Um, you know, it's, it's very, and then from there you coach the person and that's, and that's the creation process. And we coach them so they can really experience what, coaching with us is like and then propose which is the fourth step that's when if if it's a good fit if if um you know, you're both are on board with it you know you propose to work together yeah. can, can we relationship. go uh, dig deeper into the the um, creation part the coaching experience so yeah. you invite them for one-on-one -on -one call how long should it last what do you say what do you do during that call yes great question so typically and again one of the beautiful things about all this coaching and this coaching profession is there's no exact way to do it um, different coaches sometimes will do different things however there are i think some basic guidelines to go by so as far as a co the length of the call what a lot of coaches do what the prosperous coach book suggests what i do is typically i have a 90 minute call that first time in 90 minutes the reason 90 minutes it's just again it's just, it's just a good number to really kind of um, have time to really dive deep and be able to do some good stuff and because especially at, when you're first meeting with somebody you know they're probably not going to um you know, just open up right away to some stranger, especially if you don't know each other. So 90 minutes really gives you time to slow down. And, um, and, and I like to do more than one call at, at before they, they pay any money. Um, and sometimes that can look different. It could be two or three calls um, before, the, be, you know, before you enter into a paid coaching relationship. And, and this can be something I could, um, I'll mention this at the end, a, a resource I can offer like, what do you do on a call? Right. Um, that's the one thing people ask me a lot is, um, you know, well, yeah, what do I do? Somebody agreed to meet with me and now what do I do? It's like, well, uh, it, it's really pretty simple. Uh, I, I have some, um, I have some PDFs that I offer on, you know, what do you do on a call? Well, there's some principles that I follow and some other coaches I know follow. And, and really that includes just kind of just being present with somebody. Um, a lot of people just want someone to listen to them. Mm -hmm. So if I can get fully present and fully engaged, it ain't about me. <laughs> it's all about the person I'm, I'm working with. Um, and you just ask questions. And, and because I want to want to guide people to, I, I believe everybody has their own, the, the answer they need in them already. Hmm. As the coach, we just want to guide them to that. Okay. So wh why, uh, why don't you close uh, the sale at the end of the call? And why do you give a second uh, Call. Yeah, it's a great question, right? Because a lot of times it can seem like, yeah, we you know we want to we want to make money. We're entrepreneurs. Like, let's let's do this. And um, I think with coaching, it's such a um, it can be such a delicate thing, and it's very intimate. Um, because after one call, the person might not be uh, ready yet to fully commit to a you know paid coaching relationship. It's almost like dating. In proposing too soon, right? Hmm. <laughs> to somebody that you want to marry. It's just really, we're not there yet. Um, and that's a, that's a big principle with being a prosperous coach, I feel is, it almost sounds counterintuitive, but, it, but, it, but it's, it works really good is to, you know, it's not about the money. It's like, it is because we're building a business, but it's really initially all about wanting to help the person. Um, so our focus isn't getting the sale, you know, it, it's really trying to help this person. So if that takes two or three calls, you know, then that's what it takes. So what do you do then during the second call? 
Yeah. So, well, usually what I'll do on the first call is um, I'll schedule the second call. Um, Cause usually almost nine times out of 10, what happens is you really get, you get some good, they get some good insights or you start to get some good um, cachet, some momentum going with each other. And the second call, we, we just continue to coach in whatever that looks like, whatever comes up. And as far as proposing, as far as, you know, you know, closing the deal, the, the, the best way it happens is when the client will ask after the, after the, at the end of the second or third call and they'll say, wow, this has been great. Okay. I get what this, what this looks like now, what this is, how do I work with you? That's the best when, when they ask. Mm. <laughs> um, what would you say to coaches who are thinking right now? Like I don't have like two or three hours to waste. Like, uh, unless you can guarantee that I will close the sale, I don't have so much time to spend on coaching experience. I need to focus on my clients and make money. <laughs> right. And to that, I would say, well, there's some patience involved, but that's what I call putting the reps in. Like if you really want to build a client, a client base, you really want to, um, be a prosperous coach. I found that's the best way to do it. And it's really, yeah, it's really just being willing to put that time in, you know? And I would say this too, if, if somebody has a full client list and they're making a lot of money coaching and, and they, whatever they're doing is working and they don't have time to do these, you know, free coaching experiences, I would say, we'll just stick to what you're doing. <laughs> right. But if, your client list isn't that big. If you're not having that much success with, you know, enrolling clients and building a client list, um, I would say then if you want, if you want to build a client list, this is a very effective way to do it. Um, so it would just be a matter of being willing to put that time in. Yeah. <laughs> do you track like your closing rate? Like how many clients out of how many coaching experiences do you get? Yeah. So what I do, and this is just like, for me, uh, I just keep an Evernote file and I go month to month and let's see. So I put, um, so I have the number of invites, the, the, the number of people I invited for the month. And then I'll, I'll put, um, how many non-paid coaching calls I did, how many proposals I did and how many yeses and no's I got. Cool. And there's no, um, it's really just a numbers game. So I can look at my month and be like, okay, I enrolled, you know, I enrolled four clients this month. Wow. That's, that's a great month. Well, I invited 10 people. I had, you know, six coaching experiences, you know, and I can see. Um, so I, I, so I guess my point in all that is I know to keep growing and building my practice. I need to always be having, that's the data I look at. I need to be having uh, invites, and having coaching experiences with non-paid clients. And if I propose to somebody and they say no, then that's, that's fine. That's good. No's are good. That's, that's a big, big principle because it lets me know I'm out there doing what I need to be doing because also yeses are going to come with the no's. Yeah. Do, do you like, um, uh, connect again with people who said no, like a few months ago? Yeah. <laughs> Great question. Because what I found in what some of my coaches have taught me is, you know, a lot of times if somebody says no, you know, one, that's okay. That's great. Um, but really it's either, um, you know, they're just not ready for it. A lot of times that's the case. Uh, because some people don't want, don't want help, right? As crazy as that sounds, they, they think they do, but really, you know, it, it's more convenient to, to hold on to whatever issues they're having or that, you know? Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I've, um, I've reconnected with people that have said no. And, um, and I've actually enrolled people and they ended up signing up, up with me that originally just said no. It could, it could be a lot of things while they said no, it's just timing's not right. Um, they're just not ready for it. Uh, maybe we just didn't, can, I'm not the coach for them at that time or whatever. And, um, and to reconnect with those, with those people, it can be as easy as just reaching out to them saying, Hey man, I was thinking about you. Um, you know, let's, let's have, let's maybe it's time to have another talk. What do you say? Yeah. 
or just uh, yeah send them an email you, or something yeah. yeah and then you maybe you give another coaching experience and you start again this process right? sure okay because one an important thing when doing the coaching experience uh, i'm i'm not just like giving that a away I'm, i'm every time i do it i get paid by experience i get every time we, every time we coach we get a little bit better at it yeah. so there, there's so value in, in doing them too so sorry mm -hmm. go ahead uh how do you handle like objections people who say they don't have money they don't have time they need to ask their wife their husband um mm -hmm. yeah how do you handle that Yeah. So I just ignore it and go right back to their, their problem. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because what that does, it, you know, the prosperous coach talks about this. It's, it's, um, it's affordability versus possibility. And when people start focusing just on the price, you know, their minds thinking, geez, you know, can I afford this? Um, do we have the money for this? If I need to go, let me go talk to my wife and, if we leave it there, you know, they leave the call and they go talk to their wife because nobody has a budget for coaching or online courses, right? It, it, this is all, people need to see the value in it. Um, so what we do instead, what I do instead is, is, you know, I, I, I acknowledge that. I say, yeah, I understand that's a lot of money or, or sure. You, you want to go talk to your spouse. Me and my wife talk about expenses and I just direct it back though to, um, possibility and by that i mean like what what we're going to if we did work together what we're going to create so mm -hmm. we bring it back to their world and what it looks like um what we're going to create together um, because then it's like oh you're wanting to build a business and you're wanting to get in shape and you're wanting to whatever it is you're wanting to do you know what's that worth to you and then you you, you can see the value in it more mm -mm. okay you know does that make sense yeah yeah totally um how do you sell your coaching like do you sell one coaching session or using this prosperous coach method it means that you're selling like packages only right you're not selling sessions by sessions yeah and that's the other fun part is we create it um that's also why in my experience it was never really effective just to send somebody to my website without talking to me and they just choose a package. Um, that's okay. And some people do that, but I, because to answer your question, each person's, each individual is going to be a little bit different. So depending on what the client is wanting to do, what we're going to create together, that determines the length of the of time that we're going to, you know, put and, and you get that information from doing, you know, two or three coaching experiences. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, um, I have a client who he, he wanted to build his photography business. He also wanted to get in shape and he also wants to get in a relationship and work on some of that stuff. So I thought, okay, so from that, we're going to, here's what we'll do. I created a package. We would need six months. Six months seems like a, a, a safe bet for that. And we're going to meet twice a month for six months. So you, you just build it and you create it from what the, clients wanting to do. I have some clients that um, are in three month packages, some four. Mm -mm. Um, so okay. that's the fun part. You create it. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Um, how do you like, um, do you have a, a persona, uh, an avatar? Like who, how do you choose who you want to work with? Because if I start to connect with everyone, like there are literally like millions and billions of people so how someone should choose his niche or his persona and go to connect with them yeah yeah great question and so what i've found in my experience with coaching is i don't have the more you coach sometimes you'll you'll start to you'll start to see a pattern Uh, a trend of people, but also, um, to me, it just, go, it just goes back to connecting with whoever I can help. Um, because I, you know, I, I know a lot of people teach, um, you know, who's your avatar or find your niche or niche down. 
which is fine, but I've just found in coaching, um, like for example, I spent a lot of time before I started doing any actual coaching, trying to find my, my ideal client, which how the heck am I supposed to know that? Must <laughs> coaching people, right? So I just made something up because that's what I thought I was supposed to do. And I think I, wa- I wasted more time trying to think of, okay, who am I going to serve? <laughs> when, when really it's just about just getting out there and connecting with people. It, as simple as that sounds, that's really, you know, what's allowed me to build my coaching practice. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, with coaching, it's, it's just, um, yeah, you, you can pick and choose who you want to work with. But again, I think the initial, what leads you there is that connecting. Okay, cool. Yeah. Do, do you have a, like a study case we can use to, as a conclusion of this, uh, this four step process? Then we can really see like, how does it yes. really work? Yeah, yeah. So, and, and I love this example because this is one of the first people I enrolled with this process. And it's, it's pretty much the opposite of what I thought my avatar was. <laughs> now, again, I don't, avatars that in, as you coach more, you'll, you'll start to see a, a pattern of kind of who you, and, from, and if you want, you can niche down from there. But it starts with, for me anyway, with actually doing the coaching. So, so one day I was in um, Sarasota, Florida, which is about an hour south of me. I was doing some shopping and um, I passed this girl and I used to only work with men, but I figured, let me just expand and see, I'm just going to work with people. <laughs> hmm. And I passed this girl and um, I said, Hey, uh, I remember faces. Well, I said, you're, aren't you friends with my wife? And she stopped and looked at me and she goes, Oh yeah, you're Rachel's husband. We had gone to dinner like a year before with a group of people. And so uh, we just started talking. Um, but because I was now in this mode of, um, you know, just always looking to connect and, possibly invite people so i'm hearing things different and in just hearing what she's saying i started to think to myself huh well, i think i could help this girl just the stuff she was sharing with me um now again you know the way you go about inviting can look different we use tact and common sense uh I'm not, i didn't feel comfortable asking this girl for her phone number <laughs> so i just said you know <laughs> so uh-huh. I just said, um, you know what? Uh, I hear what you're saying. She, she started talking about how she was wanting to be a yoga instructor and she didn't know how to make that work um, and, and some other things. She was talking about wanting to get in shape. And um, so I said, you know, um, I, have, I have some resources I think that might be helpful to you. Uh, I said, I'm a coach, actually, and that's kind of what I do. And you can mention that or you don't have to. So I said, let's exchange email addresses and I'll send it over to you. And she said, oh, okay. I also, um, I also gave like a four step process of some stuff she could do just real simple stuff to kind of, you know, get moving in, the, in that direction. Mm-hmm. So, uh, when I got home, I emailed her and I sent her a, um, a couple audios that I have just some like inspirational material. And, um, then I gave her the, the, the little four steps she can try. Then I waited about, I don't know, four or five days and I emailed her and I said, Hey, Lisa, uh, were you able to try out those, those steps I gave you? And she wrote back and the subject line said, ah, you know, A G G H H. And she's like, no, I'm incredibly frustrated. She, and then she like, just kind of shared some more stuff. She's like, I can't go to bed at a decent hour and I'm sleeping in late and I really just need to get stuff together. And, and then, okay. So then I'm like, okay, I, I invited her to a call. I was like, how about we jump on a call and you know, we could talk about some of these things. And that's all, all it was. And we had two coaching calls at 90 minutes. And at the end of the second call, she said, okay, she was like, I get what this is. Um, she goes, how do I like, how do I like pay you? Like, what do we do? Because I want to keep doing this. And I said, okay. And, and I, I had an idea in my head of what I, what I would, what we would do and the cost and all that. And I proposed to her, I said, this is what it would look like. We, um, we would do six months. And then you just make up the logistics, you know, whatever you want, twice a month, once a month, whatever. Okay, cool. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so that, you know, so that was, that involved no email marketing that involved no like direct. She, she doesn't even go online. She doesn't even have social media actually. Like, wow. Um, and again, that stuff is valuable, but it's not necessary all the time. Okay. Yeah. 
Thank you, Chris. We learn a lot. Um, if someone wants to work with you and learn from you um, about this coaching uh, 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 client's creation thing and to be a better coach, uh, what do you propose? How could they find help with you, uh, from you? Yes. So the best way, well, so one, you can check out my website. It's chrispavone.com. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a little information there about me, but the best way to learn more about coaching with me or how I teach people to coach would be to uh, just email me. It's chris at chrispavone.com. And I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. You can maybe even jump on a call and talk about this. And, um, I also have some, um, some PDFs that if you do jump on a call would be, might be helpful to you that I, that I could send you. Uh, okay, I'll tell you cool. what to do on a coaching call. Yeah. So the link, uh, will be, um, on the description with your email address. Um, mm -hmm. do you have a final word to encourage uh, the coaches who are, uh, watching us? Yes. So, I would say whatever, if you're, if you're wanting to be a coach, you can absolutely 100% do it. One of the coolest things about coaching is that nobody's born an amazing coach. And by that, I mean, you can develop the skills, you can work at it, you can develop what's necessary to be a great coach. You get to be a, a great coach if you decide to be. Wow. So, and that looks like being coached and just coaching people. <laughs> so um, if you want to be a coach, I mean, you, you definitely can. So yeah, just you stay at it. <laughs> you can do it. Okay. It's not like the NFL where you're like, you either, you know, here, in, here in America, like NFL is huge. Like you either have the physical ability or you don't. Right. Yeah. Um, coaching, anybody can be a coach if you, if you want to be and you're willing to work at it. Okay. Cool. Thank you so much, Chris. It was uh, so useful to listen to you and I hope people will find a lot of value. If you want to know more about Chris, please click on the link below. Thank you, Chris, and see you tomorrow for coaching yes. session, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a rare weekend session. Yeah. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Lincoln. Yep.